Good afternoon, everyone. I am Emily Bull, DRI's Marketing Director, and I will be moderating today's SureShip webinar. Before I introduce our presenters, I want to go over a couple of housekeeping items. All of our attendees are muted as they enter the webinar. Today's presentation, I expect, will be about uh, 45 minutes long, I think we discussed, and time permitting, we will open the floor for a live Q&A session at the end of the presentation. If you would like to ask a question, you may do so by typing and submitting it in the question tab of your GoToWebinar toolbar. You can submit a question at any time throughout the webinar. And if we don't have time to respond to you during the session, we will follow up with you directly via email following the live break broadcast. We'll also be recording this webinar and that recording will be emailed to all of our registrants following today's live presentation. You can expect that either this afternoon or first thing tomorrow morning. Before we jump in, I want to make you all aware of DRI's next webinar. Tim, if you wouldn't mind switching to the next slide. On Thursday, February 22nd, we will be hosting a webinar, Revolutionize Sightline Payment Processing, Unlock Efficiency and Security with Zonal Pay. Zonal Pay is a new sightline payment processing solution powered by Decision 365, and it allows sightline users to accelerate payment submissions, reduce payment acceptance costs, enhance security, ensure accurate record validation, and so much more. You can learn more about that session and register at decision.com slash events. With that, I am really excited to introduce our presenters today. As you may have heard, DRI uh, announced an acquisition of another Enforce Sightline Gold Channel partner in December, AIT Business Services. Joining us today are two of DRI's newest team members from that acquisition. DRI Director of ERP Products, Tim McManus, and DRI Manager of ERP Products, Leslie Ransley. A big motivation for that acquisition was the product we're going to be showing you today, SureShip, along with the talent and expertise that that AI team is bringing to DRI. So with that, Tim, I think everyone's really excited to see SureShip in action finally. So why don't you go ahead and take it away? Thank you, Emily. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for making uh, time here on a uh, Wednesday. Go through here. Uh, as as Emily said, uh, SureShip is something that we have uh, we've been working with for some years now, and uh, we're absolutely stoked to be uh, part of the DRI team and to really be able to put some resources into uh, the roadmap that we'll talk about here in a little bit, and uh, uh, you know some of the other things. In terms of you know overall what what SureShip is, uh, we do API integrations, direct integrations with uh, between Sightline, Cloud Suite, uh, and different carriers, either parcel carriers, LTLs, uh, freight. Uh, we, we also uh, addressed some of the uh, some of the shortcomings, I might say, with the you know standard pick, pack, and ship. A lot of our customers haven't used that too much, um, and uh, because of you know, flexibility issues, things like that. Um, in addition to just the flow process, we've included customers and transporters and that. We can do rate shopping, uh, managing what we bill the customer versus what we pay in freight. Um, and you know, one of the biggest things is this is written in uh, Mongoose. It's written inside the Sightline app. So uh, you don't have uh, another set of users to administer. You don't have um, another technology that you're going to need to adopt in terms of you know if you, you want to make any changes. Um, you know, if you're familiar with Mongoose, you know how extensible it is, um, and that that was a big uh, big motivation in our doing this into Mongoose. Um, that's kind of what it does, but why uh, why do it? And this is um, something we've you know we've determined from feedback from our customers. Um, you know, value uh, they're gonna they're going to you know right now a shipping organization does a lot of things, uh, can do a lot of things that are not value add, manual paperwork, manual communication, um, you know, uh, you know, freight error tracking things. So reducing the fulfillment costs, um, scalability, we've got customers that are seasonal, they will, um, you know, they'll get uh, more shipping activity at a certain time or customers that are just growing, um, they're taking on a new business, they want to go with um, B2C commerce and their orders are gonna explode. Um, error reduction we talked about, just 
you know, the manual stuff that happens, handing off, um, you know, tracking numbers, things like that throughout the organization. Um, and if you are looking at, you know, freight as a potential profit center, being able to manage that and uh, increase that. Now, I'll make a bold, uh, bold statement here. Could someone uh, or average company realize $100,000 in annual savings? Uh, maybe. Uh, so hold that thought. And when I get through the uh, the demo, we'll, we'll come back to that question. We've been doing this for, for a little while. We've had it uh, for a few years and we have been uh, bringing on customers at a uh, very rapid pace here. Um, we've been very, very successful with that. And I think we've been very successful with uh, with keeping that focus on value to our customers that, that implement this. Uh, quick example uh one of our customers holly uh they you may have seen them they do automotive parts they have a lot of volume um you know up to three thousand orders eight thousand lines per day um and they chose us because their existing shipping application at the time was choking uh it's a fairly large operation 12 shipping lanes and they were you know just to keep up with demand they were doing six days a week we uh, we installed and implemented SureShip, and uh, within weeks, I think Leslie, uh, they were actually able to permanently in, eliminate uh, the Saturday shift on that. So that's that's one example. Another is uh, a customer who was gracious enough to join us today. Uh, Tangent uh, Materials is a sustainable lumber, uh, recycled plastic lumber, things like that, and uh, it's interesting, the applications, everything from uh, building houses to building uh, stables. Uh, John C is the VP of Information Technology, and like I said, he was gracious enough today to uh, say a few words of, you know, what, why they chose CureShip, uh, what the implementation was like, the value that they've gotten out of it, and uh, any other uh, glowing comments he feels free to make. Thank you, John. Of course. Thank you, Tim. Let's see. Uh, I'm sorry. Are you ready for me to go? Absolutely. That was an introduction. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit about Tangent. Um, as uh, as Tim described, we we manufacture um, lumber. We take 100% recycled plastic. We extrude that into what we it's it's essentially simulated wood, plastic wood. Uh, we've got three different verticals. Um, one is the the, the raw extruded uh, wood that we create in in, in a, a variety of different profiles, um, and these are your boards to uh, to sheets. And we resell that as OEM to our customers, where they'll take that and they'll manufacture it into a variety of different products. Um, and you see some of them there uh, on the screen. Um, and another vertical is um, what we call structural, and we sell that primarily to governments. So um, a, a lot of the boardwalks, a lot of marine applications, decking, uh, fencing material, um, a lot of protection that's used in marine applications so that uh, ships do not uh, rub up against um, in other infrastructure and damage that. So. Um, you know, one of the, our recent contracts is uh, down in the Panama Canal and um, in helping to protect that. Uh, and then finally, our other vertical is selling to uh, retail customers. And we do that through a, a variety of different um, methods, uh, drop ship to customers, um, direct ship to their, uh, um, their DCs. Um, and that's in our, our our back essentially our backyard furniture which you see there in the picture of the right um, we're also opening up a line of business uh, direct to consumer um, and we'll be soon putting up our uh, our new website to, to sell direct um, we've been using sightline here at tangent for geez I'm, I'm gonna say probably about 15 years or, or longer. Um, 
and to demonstrate that the current version that we're on is is 9.0.30 which i think at this point is 10 years old um we're you know we're getting ready to um to go to our upgrade to version 10 and um and using dri as our partner there they're going to help us get there um and so what have we been doing for shipping prior to to sure ship we we had in our expansion of our, our retail line uh, made a, a several acquisitions and uh, through one of those acquisitions that company was using a product called starship and um, when we we integrated uh, or migrated the um, the ERP of that that company that was using starship um, we decided to to give it a try um, DRI helped us out um, with integrating uh, some of the uh, the data that that would get processed through Starship into Sightline, um, but we we felt that Starship was uh, very lacking in in a lot of different areas. Um, it uh, we we it was a really a, a custom integration, and um, and we found um, that it, it really was it was a, a sinking ship riddled with holes. Um, is there were, you know, I, I won't go into too much detail here, but um, we had some some needs and and a desire to to change our operations um, as we expanded our, our retail fulfillment and, and needed to handle a, a, a bigger volume of, of product. And so um, we talked to, to SureShip, who was um, ironically enough recommended to us through um, a reliable source, uh, one of our PMs over at, at DRI, and this was pre-acquisition. He had no, no knowledge of what was coming. Uh, this was a, a big surprise to him as well, um, but a, a, a very good and positive outcome in our opinion. Uh, but so we looked at SureShip, we looked at, at ShipStation. Uh, we found that they had introduced a new uh, outrageous cost um, where they, it was a per label fee um and then we talked to shippo who, who would blow off our scheduled meetings and not respond to emails and um, we didn't think that a partner uh who engaged in those types of practices and in, in the sales process would have been a good fit um and then sure ship the, the folks over there leslie and and tim um very responsive very helpful gave us all the time that we needed to um explain uh the benefits of of SureShip, the capabilities and and so we talked through our specific needs with them um we had a very compressed timeline to launch because we wanted this to line up with uh our our new um uh, direct consumer platform um that we were getting ready to launch and that i think we we we, we signed with SureShip in mid-october we said we needed to be up in well, about a month and a half, two months, and uh, and and they met that deadline. Uh, we ended up delaying it ourselves, which I'll get into in a, a minute. But um, but they were able to execute in a very uh, compressed timeline, um, and so um, we we also utilize uh, DRI's D three sixty five for EDI. And, um, and this proved to be very helpful as well as the, uh, the EDI mapping side was very quick to implement between uh, SureShip and D365. Um, so we, we hadn't been using the Sightline uh, pick, pack and ship module. And, and this was uh, uh, an issue for us. Um, we wanted to find more efficiencies within the warehouse. We were uh, creating, um, paper pick lists and running them out to uh, the pickers on the floor. And we are not, still not to this day, using uh, factory track with warehouse mobility, um, and which uh, we've, we've substituted with a product uh, called InSync. And this was the cause of our, our initial uh, delay. Um, we, we needed InSync to be able to uh, present and what what insync does is they present forms on on uh, handheld scanners 
uh, from Sightline. And so we needed them to be able to present the pick list forms um, through uh, SureShip. And they were able to do it. It just it took them about a month longer than than we had hoped um, through testing. But um, but they're able to do it, and we're we're now able to uh, create pick lists within Sure uh, within SureShip. And then um, once that's complete, the the pickers out in the floor are able to assign themselves to orders within Sightline from the scanner, uh, and and then fulfill those orders. So we are we're very happy with um with at least that one step or one process improvement it's saving us a lot of time uh from having um having on two 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 sides of the coin there the the csrs who are responsible for um uh, creating the documentation um not only the pick list but also the packing slips and labels that they would create and then um bring out to, or have somebody come in and pick them up um to the, for the warehouse pickers. Now we have a packing station out on the warehouse floor and um, the pickers, after they've uh, you know, they've gone through the wave, they've picked their, the product, they are able to print out the labels in the packing slips out there on the floor. Um, and that all was enabled by SureShip. Um, we, we couldn't have done it without that. Um, so, uh, you know, eventually, We'll see if we move to uh, to factory track with warehouse mobility and if that changes things at all. But um, at least for the moment, what we've got going with NSYNC has been working uh, well, and um, and they really had no issues in um, in getting that uh, data from uh, from the tables in SureShip. Um, and and finally, I think I'd, I'd like to comment on uh, the project management because that was critical in what enabled um, our speed to execution. Um, the, I, I, I won't mention the project manager's name because everybody's gonna be asking for when you sign up with SureShip, but, um, but her organization, uh, her, the way she ran her training, the training sessions, um, her communication through email, her follow-ups were all very prompt um, and, uh, and like I said, very well organized. Um, it, it, she she was outstanding and and a good reflection of uh, of what SureShip represents. So um, thank you very much, um, and and Tim and Leslie, thank you for everything that you did to help us um, get on a a a better shipping platform um, than anything that we've experienced here so far. Excellent, and, and thank you, and thank you also for not mentioning our PM's name. Um, we don't want to, we don't want to lose that one for sure. But uh, yeah, I really appreciate you making time here. Um, and so let's kind of take a look at what um, what we saw. It, again, uh, what we wanted to do, and and we had done hundreds of implementations before, and we did a lot of one-off modifications for customers over the years. Can you you know, integrate to WorldShip or something like that. And one day we decided let's build something repeatable and installable. And that's where SureShip started. And it really did start kind of as an API type of thing, but shipping really is a lot more uh, going on than that, you know, both upstream and downstream in terms of maybe rate shopping and uh, the packing and tracking afterwards and things like that. So that's that's where it built into. And, and the concept here is, um, Everything that you need to do, whether you know picking parts, um, packaging things, scales, labels, tracking, all that sort of stuff, is in uh, in Mongoose in the CSI application. In terms of carriers, uh, we have available to us hundreds, literally, of, of carriers, of over 100 parcel carriers, and uh, a large number of uh, LTL and freight companies either through direct API connections or one thing we've been doing a lot more of lately is third party uh, uh, logistics and, and freight brokers. And for instance, a Worldwide Express, uh, one account with them uh, can give you uh, options to tens of thousands of, of carriers around the country, whether they are, you know, super automated, um, you know, high tech shops or, you know, things that uh, still have a rotary phone there. Um, 
you can get access to those through some of these 3PLs. All right, so last uh, slide here um, before we start the demo. One of the things that we, we did understand is not everyone's uh, process is the same and there needs to be flexibility. And that was one of the things with, you know, when we looked at say the pick back and ship, uh, we, we didn't want to change that, modify it. We, we did what we call our alternate universe pick back and ship uh, because maybe, you know, maybe an organization wants to do pick lists and they want to uh, do the picking and, and staging. We actually added staging um, uh, through SureShip and do the packing, like, like John said, out on the factory with scanners and things like that. Or maybe, you know, they don't want to do staging or maybe they just want to do pick lists. Um, give them to people, go out and, you know, they'll take their totes down to the packing station um, and they won't do that middle step there. You could do that. Um, or maybe they don't even want to do pick lists. They're just going to go um, get some orders uh, you know, at the shipping station, fulfill those. And, you know, last thing is maybe I want to ship stuff that's uh, not even on an order. I might want to you know, send out our you know, holiday hams or something to customers who are missing any shipments. So uh, what, whatever you need to do, and it doesn't need to be plugged in, you know, that as a company, I always do one, one thing or another, but, um, you know, it can, be, it can be adjusted on a case by case basis. So that is it for my PowerPoint. I'm gonna go into the application here. Um, and first thing I wanna do is I wanna do a, uh, a shipment, quick shipment here um, of the, I'm just gonna take an order and ship it. And through our, uh, through our shipping console, we could directly ship customer orders. Uh, if you're doing transfer orders, we can do that. Uh, service orders, if you're using the service module, both material and line on that. Uh, in this particular case, oh, and if you do pick, back, and slip, uh, pick, pack, and ship, obviously, uh, pick lists. So I'm going to do a uh, do an order here. Let's see. Yes. Just go out and scan an order. There we go. Um, scan that in. It's just you know simple one part thing. I'm going to create that shipment. This is creating a bill of lading in the background, and it's going to take me to my packing station here. Um, I can go ahead and type in or scan in a package. Uh, you know your full package master that tracks your dimensions, your tear weights, things like that. Um, and I'll just go ahead and set that up. And then I've only got one part. I can just add, you know, this. If I have multiple items that go in a box, I just say add all items. Or, you know, if I want to even drag and drop it into the package, uh, I can do that. And notice that it increased the weight here. Uh, that's coming from the item master. If you don't have that set up, you can just throw this on a scale and say get weight. Or, you know, maybe the scale is not connected to this thing. I can type that in manually. Uh, so basically, I picked an order. I put it in a box. And uh, now I want to actually just print the shipping label here. So by doing that, I'm creating the shipment uh, directly with uh, the carrier, in this particular case, UPS. So it's not talking to a world ship or a FedEx ship manager or something like that. Um, it assigned the tracking number here. Uh, I'm ready to go. The next thing I need to do is just go ahead and print this uh, and ship the order. Um, so that would relieve inventory um, and print the documents. In terms of the documents that I do print, let me describe those a little bit. Instead of you know having to go out and you know open up the banking slip and open up the bill of lading, basically one one touch uh, printing here. Uh, all, these are all the documents that we can set up um, as a default. I can choose, you know, on every shipment, I want to do these two. On a customer by customer basis, I may want to include different ones. If you've got uh, customers that uh, require their own version of uh, a you know, packing slip or, or whatever it is, you can uh, do that. Again, back to Mongoose and the extensibility, 
Uh, you can do that just as part of the application. And then the, you know, the documents that'll print are, and I apologize for the old logo. <laughs> We, uh, the acquisition was was really fresh, but uh, in terms of you know documentation, we do you know domestic, we do foreign um, uh, foreign documents as well, and um, shipper letter instructions if you're doing brokers, uh, different certificate of origins on here as well. So basically, um, quick shipments, you know, drag drag an order in, drag a part into the box. Uh, print the label, print the shipment, uh, and do the shipping transaction. The other thing is, if I didn't necessarily want to do this shipping transaction right now, um, I can just go ahead and print those documents. And then what I can do is go to our bulk utility here and say, okay, UPS uh, carrier is here. The UPS truck showed up. Everything uh, that I've set up just you know what i showed you it's boxed it's ready to go but i haven't done the inventory transactions yet um, go ahead and select everything and you know maybe this one and this one didn't get on the truck go ahead and process it and relieve all the inventory and set it up for uh for invoice um so you've got that choice of whether or not i want to you know do these one at a time or um in, in bulk um, so that's a quick shipment Let's go and take a look at the uh, our pick console. So a couple of things I uh, mentioned: alternate universe uh, pick, back, and ship. If uh, those of you who have used pick, back, and ship, this might look familiar. Uh, just kind of the standard pick workbench with you know each part line by line by line. You can do filtering here. You can um, select you know ship early, ship complete. Um, and in addition to that, not just customer orders, but we also have this available for uh, transfer orders and service orders. So you can do uh, pick, pack, and ship with uh, transfers, uh, service orders. We have a lot of customers doing transfer orders, uh, you know, in between facilities, and you know they'll get they'll add requirements during the week. Um, and I mentioned that staging uh, capability is you know they can start and stage up a transfer order and then. You know, ship it at the end of the week. We also have customers that have you know 300 line items uh, on an order, and this gets a little bit cumbersome here uh, on that. So we created another uh, option here, which very similar, uh, similar in function. It's going to list what I need to ship and allow me to pick it and print pick lists. Uh, but instead of line by line, this is looking at things on an order by order basis. And it's telling me um, over here, I still get some of the line detail. I've got my total parts that are out there, um, total parts that are available. Um, you know, I can do it in pieces, value if I wanted to, you know, based on permissions, if you want your factory or your warehouse people to see that. I want to ship all the high value things at the end of the uh, end of the month. I can do that. It's looking at that availability and it's telling me here whether or not this is ready to ship uh, maybe it's partially ready to ship and maybe it's not ready to ship and i get to uh, invoke that um, or get that list when i invoke the report you know show me everything that's partially ready and you know ready if i had a partial ready that you know you had the ship early or ship complete rules on it's going to show up it's not ready or not show up on there um, now here's where i can look and say you know a lot of these are going to the same place um and what i want to do is actually combine some of these shipments so i can go ahead and uh assign my groups if you notice this group here it's a it's a pick list group right and now it just kind of changed this i've got a bunch in 14 some 17 and and what it's doing there is it's looking at where is this going where's the ship to how is it being shipped what's the due date uh, things like that. So it's grouping it by that. Um, if I wanted to ignore the due date, um, you know, plus or minus uh, a day or two, I could ignore the due date, maybe put a due date range in here uh, and do that. And basically, I'll just select select the orders that I want to print, go ahead and generate that pick list. And that is going to generate some documentation here. 
which will look like this in our pick list. The other thing I, uh, I did was a bulk pick list. Um, and I'm only picking one part here uh, on this example, but if I had you know, chosen 20 orders that I wanted to pick for various customers and various things, there may be common parts there. The bulk pick list is gonna take that sort of by part number, by location, so I can maybe have an orderly, uh, you know, orderly pick through the factory. All right, so uh, now that I've printed that pick list, I'm gonna go to uh, the shipping console. Now, if I wanna use factory track on this, I can do that. We've got a factory track uh, plugin. Uh, the other thing that I can do here is, let me go to, back to my example here, where I'm, Go ahead, um, go ahead. I did the pick list. Um, I could do the picking, or in this particular case, I'm gonna print the pick list and just go back to that uh, packing station. So from this shipment, I'm going to go ahead and uh, find my packing list uh, or my pick slip and go ahead and create the shipment there on that. Um, and that's gonna do the same, same thing, take me into a place where I can uh, package these things up um, and ship it. I actually want to uh, pick one other order here. Let's do something with more parts on it. I'll do that guy. Generate that. My IDO issue on my demo environment. There's my pick list go over here. I'm going to go to the shipping console, pick that. Scan that in there. Um, so th this has you know a number of uh, parts in here. I just wanted to uh, illustrate a couple things here. When I've got multiple parts, uh, you know this these may be big. I may need extra boxes uh, here. So instead of adding packages one by one, I can come over here and say, you know what? I know I need three of these uh, packages, and you know I can bulk add them. Uh, again, I can, you know, add these parts one at a time, uh, or I can scan them with quantities. If you've got uh, your parts barcoded, you can scan them into a box, either one by one, like supermarket, or I can scan them and indicate the quantity that I want to do. Um, and then let's just add this last one. The last part that's here, um, you notice a, uh, a flag that says self-contained. I'm gonna pop out to the item here real quick and explain that. Self-contained is uh, maybe an item uh, that gets put on the shelf. Um, I, I went and bought a heater the other day and, and it showed up from Amazon uh, just with the label on it. Um, it was in the package that it was stocked in. Um, so they didn't need to go through the process of actually putting that in uh, an additional uh, package, believe it or not, Amazon does do that sometimes, uh, but it, it just came off the shelf. You can specify that here and, you know, we could call it auto pack, but the self-contained item says uh, for this particular thing that one of these will fit into this package, uh, you know, the 118 package, maybe four of them fit into a different box. Um, so if I ordered five, it would, it, it would know pack one box of four, pack one box of five. In this particular case, they're just, you know, one each per box. I've got a uh, quantity here of, let me see. Here my, so I've got a quantity of four. If I just go ahead and add this uh, box, I'll double click it. Uh, it's going to add the part. It's gonna add four packages here um, and put one piece in, uh, in each of the boxes. Now happen to know this part fits very nicely on a pallet. So if I go over here and I wanna actually create a pallet um, for these, I can choose these boxes. This one, this one, and this one. These will fit very nicely on the pallet. I'll go ahead and load that pallet. Um, and now what I've done is I've gotten the, uh, you know, the boxes there. I haven't lost detail of the 
uh, the contents here. I can still see the you know the boxes uh, on that. If I wanted to at this point do uh, do rate shopping here, I can do that as well. Um, and let me find one that is. I think I've got one that I did with freight here. Uh, I don't have that yet. So um, in terms of the rate shopping here, I can go out and I can select um, a specific carrier if I wanted to, or I can uh, say, show me all the parcel carriers or all the freight carriers. Um, and I'll find one here in a second that's that's freight. But uh, for instance, Worldwide Express will go out and uh, look at all of the freight carriers that they have available that I've you know uh, contracted with uh, or chosen to include in my in my shopping. It's going to look at what I'm what I'm shipping, how much weight, the routes, and it's going to come back and tell me uh, you know these carriers are ones that are capable of doing the shipment. And here are the uh, here are the uh, costs for you. All right, so let me get back here and finish this uh, shipment that I'm doing. Okay. All right, save that. I'm going to go out here and. Uh, Do some shipping. I'm gonna print my shipping labels here. You know, I want, I want to talk a little bit about what happens um, upstream or downstream uh, of this. Let me go back here. There we go. Just going to adjust some dimensions here for the shipment. Okay. That is not saving. Let me find one that I did ship here with a bunch of parts on it. There we go. Um, here's another example. Um, same, same thing. Uh, I've got the pallet with the boxes on it. Um, in this particular case, I did the, you know, I did the shipping. I want to take a look at the actual uh, shipment itself on the bill of lading here. Uh, so if I go ahead and take a look here, if I did this through pick lists, you know, I get to see all the pick lists I used. Um, in terms of the packaging here, uh, because I, you know, I pack those up, I get to see. Um, here, here are the boxes. Here's this pallet that I added. Uh, there are the four boxes I put on it. There are the parts in there. So uh, I can see, you know, down to a box package level. Here's the tracking number. Um, if you were doing lot or serial tracking, um, you'd be able to, uh, you know, customer service could say, you know, Mr. Customer, uh, your serial number here is in this box. Here's the tracking number. Uh, you can track that. So um, that detail there where, you know, a number of other applications just give you kind of generic, you ship these boxes and, you know, there's some stuff in it. Uh, this is right down to, uh, you know, each individual part. In terms of the freight that, um, that gets charged here, I'm going to go to that, go to that tab. Uh, you see, there's actually two orders here uh, because this was one of the combined shipments. Um, and what we do here is, in this particular case, we're splitting the freight equally across those orders. And this freight is, you know, $511. Uh, that's what I'm paying. What I charge the customer might be a little bit uh, different, or I might want that to be different. So we have billing rules here where we go out and uh, in this particular case, here's a 10% uh, cost rule. And what I'm doing here is uh, based on, you know, in this particular case, my negotiated rate, it could be the published rate or shipment value or something. Uh, I want to add this uh, markup, and that could be a dollar or a percent. 
in this particular case, 10%. And, and I can do that um, via date range. I can do it for specific customers, uh, ranges of customers, ranges of customer types, uh, things like that. Um, so this is going to get a 10% markup. If I look over on this order and I see the amounts tab, there's my $511 plus the 10%. Uh, now, maybe I've quoted uh, the customer uh, a rate that I don't want to change at billing there. Um, I've got the ability here to lock that freight down. Um, and if, if I want to, I can actually do the rate shopping from the order here as well. Uh, so here's an example where I've gotten uh, freight quotes here, or rate quotes uh, on that. And if, let's say I chose uh, you know, one of these, it will still apply my rule uh, to, to that order, mark it up 10%. But then basically what I'll do is lock that on so that whatever I quoted them, it's not going to change. Now, customers uh, a lot of times have their own accounts. Sightline, I'm assuming most of you are Sightline users. Uh, you know that Sightline does accommodate customer shipping accounts, but they only give you one uh, shipping account per ship to. So if you've got a customer that has a you know, FedEx account or UPS account, um, you've either got to set up a separate ship to or you've got to manage it in notes. And then we get back to that manual, you know, extra cost, error prone thing. Uh, we set up the uh, provision, the ability here that a customer can have as many uh, as many different accounts as they need to. Uh, you know, a UPS account, a FedEx account, maybe it's you know, freight international is going to be a different thing. Um, and then you'll choose a default. And if that's set up, basically when you create the order, that default will come over uh, and propagate through to the shipment. Now, if you're doing international. Uh, maybe you still want to do that prepay and add thing, uh, but you want the customer to pay for their export charges. Uh, you've got the ability to split that up. In terms of, uh, you know, when I am looking at, you know, freight, uh, freight shopping here, um, you know, a lot of things can, uh, can affect that, uh, that rate. Is it, you know, if it's freight, do I need a lift gate? Is it Saturday delivery? Um, you've got the ability to uh, specify that here and at the shipment console. Um, and then kind of getting back to the uh, original thing, tracking, the minute I do that shipment, uh, this is here for customer service to see. They can just right click on this and get down into that uh, detail that we showed you, you know, down to the package level if you want. Okay, so uh, I did a quick shipment. Uh, I did the, uh, or a, a rapid shipment, I'll call it. Um, I did the pick, pack, and, and ship side of it, uh, but there's a little bit more to the pick, pack, and ship side. Talking about, you know, one of the uh, challenges that customers have had with that uh, pick, pack, and ship is the ability, you know, if I make a mistake, right? Um, I get into this you know, situation where I've got to undo everything and start from scratch. And we, we took a different approach here so that you can have, let's just call a packing slip here. Um, so this is the shipment that I did. And whether I've created a shipment or it's still just in the pick list phase, uh, I have access to this here. This is what I'm supposed to do. Maybe you know, I went there and they just don't have the inventory for four. I can change that quantity there as well. Or this item's, you know, I can't find it anywhere, we can't ship it. So instead of having to like negate everything and unpick everything and repick it, I can pivot and make those changes. Uh, maybe a customer actually, um, you know, got in before the three o'clock deadline and they wanted to order something uh, else. I also have the ability here to go out and uh, choose a different, shipment here and add that and combine things so i can uh you know i can remove some items change quantities i can merge things after the fact as well in addition to that kind of level of flexibility we'll go back to the shipment maybe um you know 
the label got messed up or something, I can reprint the shipping label easily enough, or maybe, um, you know, this thing can't go today, or you know, uh, one of the parts broken, and, and I need to actually um, take it out, which is going to affect the weight, which is going to affect the tracking. I can void that tracking number. I can void all the tracking numbers. Um, if if I wanted to, um, I can void the tracking numbers and you know remove a box, remove a part, or if I hit this undo button, what that would do is uh, it's going to remove the parts from the box, remove the boxes, get rid of this bill of lading, uh, and unpick that, um, get rid of that uh, pick list that I did, and then it would just show up uh, back here on my order pick console as if nothing ever happened. So just in terms of you know flexibility in that process, um, whether I want to do the whole pick back and chip or pieces of it, um, or something goes wrong, uh, I've got that ability. Uh, last thing um, that just want to send Christmas hams uh, scenario. Uh, if I look here, uh, we've got a form called Quick Ship that you can. Uh, okay, we can. Go to this is just a miscellaneous shipment. You see, some of this stuff looks the same. You know, I've got a, you know, I want some boxes. You know, I have to ship a box, but um, I can create an address on the fly. I can use, um, I can use Sightline's many address books. And by that, I mean, you know, customers have their own addresses. So if I want to send something to a customer, I can just choose the customer, it'll fill in the address, um, vendor. Maybe it's none of the above and I just want to create, um, you know, an additional address book record in here. I can do that as well. Um, and then once that's in there, um, you know, I throw a box on scale, weigh it, uh, get my labels. If I wanted to put detailed information in there, I can, um, but I don't have to. Um, one example of why I might want to from the international side, we've got customers who they just, you know, they're doing samples internationally and uh, they do want um, the information from the item master in terms of the export codes, the HTS, HTS codes, things. They want that there on the documentation. Again, the documents are the same. We can do, uh, you know, same export documents here, but they didn't want to ship anything out of, uh, out of the system because um, it's not even really uh, something that they keep in inventory. Uh, so the quick ship, basically I can do that. The difference here, this is not going to do any uh, inventory transactions on that, but I can use it for, like I said, customer shipments, or maybe it's going to a vendor uh, outside process, um, you know, vendor return, something like that. I think. Um, Leslie, I'm going to ask you what I missed here. I think you have it all covered. Okay. All right. Well, that's uh, that's the speed dating tour of uh, of the application. Why don't we uh, pause here and maybe take some questions? Yeah, so Leslie will go ahead and facilitate the Q&A. A reminder to our attendees, if you have a question, you can type and submit it in the question tab of your webinar toolbar. Leslie, if you want to go ahead and take yeah. over. Tim, so one of the questions is, do you interface with WorldShip and Ship Manager and, you know, do you load our rates into the system? Uh, yeah, so good good question there. Um, we don't interface with WorldShip because uh, that would just be an extra hop. We are, so WorldShip's UPS, we are talking directly to UPS. Um, and because we're doing that, whatever my negotiated rate is as of you know February 7th, 2024, that's what's going to get pulled back from UPS. So I don't even really have to load rates uh, in any rate table. I'm just getting that directly from the carrier. Great. Um, another question, do you generate ASNs for EDI? Uh, we do, absolutely. Um, as you can see here, uh, we've got that uh, that level of detail here in terms of what's in there, and that's kind of what an ASN will need. And I think you know John mentioned we're using he's using uh, 
D365, which is the um, DRI's uh, EDI uh, interface tool um, on that. And if it's not, if it's not D365, we still, you know, we can still generate the ASN data. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'm looking at time, but let's see. How about do you um do do you do inventory allocation for pick, pack, and ship? Uh, another good question. I like this. So if I if I go back to my uh, my pick console here, uh, what I'm doing here is this is going down. You know, I talked about what's available, what's you know available and ready. Let's just open this up to a bunch of words here. Um, this is looking at how many I have on hand, how many are required, and it's counting down there. So if I've only got you know limited parts to fulfill half these orders, these will be ready. The others won't be ready. Right. Once, by the way, once I do the pick list uh, on it, then that quantity picked carries forward. So if I, um, even though I haven't picked it and taken it out of inventory, if I rerun this report, that um, you know that quantity assigned to the pick list will be taken into consideration. Excellent. Um, I'm going to go ahead and answer this one since I'm usually the one who's kind of working on this part. Is how long does it take to implement? Um, and I would say an average implementation is about three months. Now, um, if you have a tighter delivery, or if you you know you've got um, a great team that's ready to really work on that training and piloting like Tanta Materials was, um, you, we can get it done, you know, faster, about two months. And if you have like a lot of special requirements, um, maybe some enhancements that might take a little bit longer. But I would say an average is anywhere from two to three months. And I think you covered, you know, changes. How do you unship something? Um, Oh, let's see. Do we do customer packing slips? Yeah. So, yes, we do have the ability to custom customer specific packing slips and automate that. So, um, and as well as labels. So, at the time of shipping, you know, you'll assign that to a specific customer, and anytime you um, generate a shipment, it'll automatically print that that packing slip or special labeling. Any kind of special documentation we can assign at the customer level and ship to level. Any other questions? Okay, well, I if not, I've got um, one other thing. I, I gave myself a challenge at the beginning of this, which was to uh, answer that $100,000 question here. And uh, here's just something, and this is based on some empirical data from, from customers. Uh, if you, if you're doing 100 shipments a day, uh, 100 orders a day, uh, your average freight shipment, 45 bucks yearly spend, um, and just kind of looking at what is your labor cost, you know, fully burdened labor cost. Um, this is national average, but um, might be, you know, different in your location. Uh, and and I look at just some of the activity like rate shopping. Let's say that I do 25% of my orders, I do rate shopping, right? Um, and if you think about when I'm actually manually doing rate shopping, I'm logging into FedEx, I'm logging into UPS, I'm you know calling, doing this. So, you know, I save what 0.8 hours, just a couple of minutes, right? Uh, same thing with having to manage customer accounts um, or communicating manual instructions to the warehouse. John mentioned. They're printing pick lists and they're carrying them out there and all that sort of stuff. Um, and, and again, you know, by automating that, we're not we're not saving a ton of time here, right? Um, picking um, error correction, right? Maybe three percent where I've got to undo everything and redo it. Uh, that obviously is going to take a little bit more time, but you know, these aren't big numbers, um, and you know, not a huge organization. But if you look at how it adds up. Um, that's you know that's a lot of money and let's say i'm wildly nuts on it and cut that in half and even cut that in half again um that's still a fair amount of savings i'm going to go to a company that does 300 orders a day right and and do the same do the same calculation so i think there's a lot of uh potential there 
uh, for savings. Um, one thing real quick in terms of roadmap, um, we are, uh, what, what I showed you now, we support all versions from 9.0.0, like John said, all the way to 10. Um, we are moving uh, all of that to the CSI 10 multi-tenant cloud. We've got a little work to do on that. Uh, but this is going to be deployed multi-tenant in time for Sun. Uh, the intelligent packing uh, we talked, or I didn't actually talk about. Um, I did that quick pack, but imagine if you were able to uh, have your uh, packages or your, your parts. It knows how big they are, what the dimensions, uh, and I have a pick list. It instructs me what packaging I need, what boxes I need. I don't even have to figure that out. And uh, a customer that uh, actually we collaborated with on this, basically they said they saved a million dollars a year in cardboard boxes by being able to do this. Uh, in addition to that, it can also print my pick list in the order I need to pick it. Uh, it can do larger container uh, optimization. And then in terms of kind of load management, uh, setting up loads and trucks and routes, were, um, that is a roadmap item as well. And uh, let's see on time here. Is it 53 right now? 57. 57. Okay. So about um, three minutes. All right, yep. three minutes. So, um, yeah, you can take a look at some of the other stuff we've got on the roadmap. And then, you know, the last, the last thing here, um, just to go back my load management, we did the QA. Um, just wanted to talk about. Um, you know, John mentioned that he's doing the uh, D365 uh, with SureShip, and um, DRI actually has facilitated a lot of uh, a lot of the endpoints of commerce uh, that work with you know Sightline uh, ERP, including you know taking orders via EDI, uh, reading PDFs, uh, Shopify front ends, um, going out shipping now with SureShip. And the uh, the webinar that we're going to have here uh, is on the zonal pay, which uh, uh, Emily mentioned is um, she had that she said it better than I would, but you know, being able to uh, process payments and uh, get get your cash more quickly. Um, so I encourage you to uh, register for that. Absolutely. So that appears to be just about all our time. Are you all wrapped up, Tim? I am. Excellent. Well, um, like Tim said, uh, we do have this zonal pay webinar coming up on February 22nd. I will send out a link in our follow-up email that goes out either this afternoon or tomorrow morning, uh, along with the recording of today's session. Uh, if you would like to see more information on the upcoming webinar and register, you can do so at decision.com slash events. Thank you to Tim and Leslie for your time today and taking the time out of your day to, to do the SureShip presentation. It was really good stuff. And thank, thank you to you, all yeah. of our attendees. Have a great afternoon.